why is it so hard for us to really find our conflicts and get this idea that some of these symptoms that we experience that have no other explanation is due to a conflict shock, something unexpected that we perceive in our lives. And, and in the end, I think it really comes down to just two things. One is that we've been primed, really we've been primed our entire lives to look for an external cause for our symptoms. So it doesn't really matter uh, whether it's a stomach ache or digestive issue, we're looking at things that we're eating. When we have pain, back pain, neck pain, we're thinking, well, it's gotta be something that we did physically. It's gotta be our posture. It's gotta be the way we sleep or the way we lift, the way we bend. Our entire lives, we're sort of primed to look outside and I really believe that's part of the issue why it's so hard for us to grasp this concept that there's an unexpected conflict tied to our symptoms is because it's easier to look outside. It's easier to blame it on something that we ate or something that we're doing wrong regarding our posture or how we sit or stand or how we lift. And so that's a big issue. Like I really think we've got to go to where it's not so comfortable. And another reason just comes down to control. We're so focused on being in control of our lives, being in control of our emotions, being in control of how we think or, or how we behave that it becomes really difficult for us to give up that control or to at least admit that we're vulnerable to not having control. It's a challenge because we have to now recognize that maybe we're not in control of our emotions. Maybe we don't know how our body's perceiving these unexpected events. And that makes us very vulnerable. And as a society, we have all these negative associations with people that don't have good control of their emotions. And so I think subconsciously, we don't wanna be associated with that. We don't wanna admit that we have conflict, that things bother us, that things make us angry or make us scared or make us feel unsupported because it's potentially a sign of a weakness or a vulnerability that we have no control of our emotions. And so I think those two things are key factors, but at the same time, we've got this science, we've got this research, there's this map available that can give us a glimpse of how we're subconsciously perceiving the world, that there's this connection between how we feel emotionally about things that happen that's out of our control and how our body responds to those things. And really, once we start to open ourselves up and yes, potentially make ourselves feel vulnerable, that we don't have it all figured out, that we're not in as full control as we think, I really think it's the beginning of, of this evolution that we're gonna be better off, that we're gonna be in tune with our body, that we're gonna be able to connect with people better and just have a greater amount of uh, empathy and respect for what everybody else is dealing with, uh, especially when they're dealing with symptoms. So I hope that if you're struggling to really embrace this concept that your symptoms may be due to some sort of unexpected conflict, that you start to look at your willingness to change that priming that we've been taught our whole lives, that it's gotta be something external and that maybe also you're willing to give up some of that control, that maybe you don't have it all figured out, that maybe you are or we all are emotionally vulnerable. Uh, and it's our symptoms that are guiding us into showing us how we are perceiving these unexpected things in our lives. And I really think by doing that, you open yourselves up to, in a contradictory way, having more control over um, being able to deal with your symptoms and overcome some of the chronic issues that we're all dealing with.